The key is not to think about it. Just stand up and get going. Oh, and avoid using your phone as an alarm. The temptation to just start procrastinating is huge and can make you waste morning hours. Instead, use something like this, an Apple Watch, or maybe something analog. In reality, anything that stops you from grabbing your phone should be able to work. Once I'm standing up, I always try to leave my laptop nearby the bed so that it would be the first thing I see. And I trained myself to almost reflexively grab it, like without even thinking about it, and just open it and start studying. And I started to develop this habit so that I wouldn't even give my mind the chance to think, hey, I really don't want to study today, and instead just find myself half an hour later thinking, hey, look, it's 7.30 and I have done all of this stuff. Best feeling ever. I sat with my laptop and started solving your old cases right away. I started with questions as they were my way of implementing a study technique called the generation effect, which states that you learn concepts better when you first try to come up with the answers by yourself instead of just reading them first. And yes, that applies to topics which you know very little of, because as it turns out, the mere act of guessing and then checking if your hypothesis was correct or not makes concepts stick far better than just reading them first and then testing yourself. Now, one of the things that I always try to keep in mind during long study days like this one was that the most difficult thing to do is always to start. Once you're like 20 minutes in, continuing is just a matter of momentum. But starting out, it's really the hardest part. And so if I manage to fool myself into starting out the study session, I by all means possible would try to keep going because I knew that if I stopped for five minutes, it was never gonna be just five minutes. And yes, that means that if I need to do something like cook breakfast, wash the dishes, make the bed, go to the bathroom, do whatever, I always try to carry my laptop along with me and try to answer the questions and think about the questions as I do whatever the hell that I happen to need to do. Now, while solving the questions, I always kept three things in mind. Number one, solving the question is more important than reading the answer. The answers are necessary and important, but having the information and knowing how to use it are two different things. And the only moment where you actually teach your mind how to think through problems is while solving the case. Number two, there's a difference between solving a problem and remembering a solution. A lot of people try to memorize the questions thinking that these will guarantee a great score, but the real exam doesn't have the exact same questions as the practice Cubans. So instead of training yourself to remember the solution to a few questions, questions, train yourself to be the one who can solve any question. Number three, focus your efforts on understanding and make the system memorize for you. This basically means that while reading the explanations, avoid wasting time trying to memorize stuff here and now. Memorization is a virtue of repetition over time. Forcing yourself to memorize stuff here and now by, for example, taking a lot of notes or repeating a lot of concepts over and over again only strengthens your working memory and does virtually nothing for your long-term storage. So instead, focus on really comprehending what you're studying in the moment and trust that the system, aka the Q-Banks, will make you revisit the important concepts over and over again, because that is what really makes you remember. By 11 a.m. I have usually reviewed the first block of questions and my mind could really use a break. So I usually go to the gym and try to have a couple of hours for myself. Two hours later. I often ended up my workouts with a little bit of cardio. Not because I particularly enjoy it, because let's be honest, who the hell does, but because I could pop up my laptop and start doing questions. You see, after training, my mind stays in kind of a fun mode and forcing her to go back to study usually has all of this friction involved. And so by bridging the end of my workout with the beginning of my study, I get to trick my mind into doing the hardest part of everything, and then once I have a few questions under my belt, continuing is just a matter of momentum. Now, a lot of people ask me how I actually learn and memorize what I study, and although I've made a few videos on the topic, I haven't really get into the nitty gritty of it. And so I just wanted to let you know that in the next month, I'll be releasing a Skillshare class called How to Study Effectively According to Science, and we'll go over the 10 biggest lessons that science has to offer us about learning and memorizing effectively. I decided to put this class up on Skillshare because I honestly think it's a great platform to learn. It is similar to YouTube in the sense that it has a search engine and the main mode of delivery is video, but it is much more tailored to learning in the sense that Everything you'll find over there is not just about grabbing your attention, clickbait, news, gossip, but instead of learning, teaching, creativity, growth, projects. And the very same platform makes learning its utmost goal with decisions like having no ads interrupting your learning process, categorizing classes according to the level of expertise, and a lot of great stuff. Just last week, for example, I watched a class called Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity by Andy J. Pizza. And not only it was one of those classes that has great production value, but it really resonated a lot with me. 
uh, during one uh, video, for example, Andy said that one of the ways to sort of find your creative identity is to look back at what you have done and what your parents were. And I realized that my dad is a doctor, my mom is a teacher, and the thing I love the most is actually teaching medicine. And one thing led to another, and I eventually realized that the thing that I really want to pursue in the, in the future is teaching medicine. And all throughout the class I had like those moments, so I really recommend this class to everyone. But that's just one example. To really understand what Skillshare is all about, I really encourage you to just try out the platform. No strings attached, just watch it. I'll leave a link in the description with a one month free trial for the first 1000 subscribers that click it. So I don't know, just try it out and I bet you can learn something useful. But anyways, now back to the afternoon study block. So the goal with the afternoon study block was the same as with the morning one, one to two blocks of questions. But in this round, there was one additional enemy. The procrastination master. <laughs> No, but really the very same nature of afternoons makes me a little bit more sluggish and procrastination does tend to become an issue. However, I did found a couple of simple tricks that were actually quite helpful. First, be on the move. You see, sometimes changing where you are and how you are is all it takes for your mind to keep going. I personally found that switching every few minutes or so from sitting down to standing up to laying down and even switching from different rooms in my house gave my mind like a new breath of energy each time and prevented her from entering procrastination mode. Simple, but trust me, quite effective. And the second tip is to put it simply, to just give your mind a little bit of what you want. You see, sometimes your mind doesn't need a full blown two hours of doing nothing to recharge batteries and go back to study. Sometimes she's just a little bit bored and wants to see something slightly distracting. So I often found that while I was studying, putting something like a podcast or an interview or a very long YouTube video worked like wonders to get me back to concentrate on my study. It is very counterintuitive and yes, sure, you may not be 100% into your study, but hey, 80% beats the hell out of this. By 6 p.m. I usually had anywhere from 80 to 120 solved questions under my belt, which I found to be my personal sweet spot for optimizing learning and memory, since it was high enough to maintain a good amount of subjects per day in review, thus optimizing space repetition and memory, but not so high that I would feel the need to rush through the questions just to hit the target. By the way, with time I realized that fixating on a rigid amount of questions per day was actually not a good strategy, since I started worrying more about hitting the target than actually learning. This is called Goodhart's Law and states that when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. From 6 to 10 p.m. it was me time and it was non-negotiable. You see, I learned through the hard way that sacrificing personal time to study or do research might actually work for a few weeks, but it's never sustainable and ends up just burning you out or decreasing your performance in the long run. So I always try to treat these four hours with the utmost respect and enjoy them to the fullest because I know that it's an investment for my future performance. All in all, I think the secret to a perfect USMLE study day lies not in following a series of steps or fulfilling some arbitrary question number, but in studying in a way that generates progress while feeling that you're living the best life you possibly could. Apply that as you see fit, and also watch this video to learn why you're probably studying inefficiently. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, to you for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one.